Hello everybody and welcome to the MBS Show Reviews. This is James Cork and with me I have Norman Sanso. It was a dark and stormy night. We were supposed to record at 10 a.m. But daylight savings got in the way, so I'm more confused now. We just got invaded by the spirit of uh, William Spade, or whatever is the name of that uh, character from the Maltese Falcon. I completely forgot him. I forgot him. And also, some brand new reviewer, Silver Quill. Miami Detective. <coughs> you have the right to remain dead. I wonder how the bullet keeps traveling without an explosion to precede it. Hmm. Must be fighting from us from a long distance. <laughs> My gosh. We already start losing it. And today we're going to be reviewing Rarity Investigates, episode 15 of season 5, overall episode 106. Written by every single person that works on the HX. Uh, <laughs> this, I have never seen this many names on an episode, uh, on an episode intro, uh, before or after. There are so many writers in this one. Story by Megan McCarthy, M.A. Larson, Joanna Lewis, and Christine Sonko, and written by Joanna Lewis and Christine Sonko. Well, with this many writers working on an episode, you would expect the story to be simple, but it actually, oh gosh, this is very, way too complex for my simple little Spanish brain. So, you know what? I'm gonna leave a professional to take care of this. So, Silver, why don't you give us, uh, your, the skinny of the, of the episode? What is it all about? Uh, one summer in Canterlot, Rainbow Dash was framed for a crime she didn't commit. Now she lives as a soldier of fortune. If you have the skills and the resources, maybe you can contact the R team. Dun, 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 dun. Wait, I'm sorry, I think I'm getting my shows mixed up. No, 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 please continue. I, I totally want to watch the A team starring Rainbow. <laughs> that would be awesome. Rainbow, Derpy, uh, both biceps, and let's just say Fluttershy, because. I will say, I will say Rarity should be face, man. <laughs> anyway, in this story, Rainbow Dash is accused of, in essence, abducting Spitfire and preventing her from participating in a Wonder, Wonder Bolts tournament. So it's up to Rarity, with her newfound love of, of crime novels, to find the real culprits and, and clear Rainbow Dash's name so she can stay a Wonder Bolt reservist, with hopes of becoming a Wonder Bolt not reservist. Even though the Wonder Bolts, I really, I'm starting to not like them. <laughs> We're going to be going into detail on why is Dash better off of the Wonder Bolts than on the Wonder Bolts. They're just a bunch of confusing ponies who fly. Well, anyway. Yeah, then. yeah we should do first impressions, of course. Mm -hmm. We definitely should do first impressions. And yeah, like like always, I abog for the inverted alphabetical order. So we're going to be hearing more of, of, of that lovely mellow voice that you put on, <laughs> Silver. The lovely Bella voice. Hello, ladies. Oh, oh gosh. He's single. <laughs> <laughs> so, what did you think of this episode, man? What's, uh, wh what did you think of it? Well, hot on the heels of, uh, Cantalot Boutique, which was sort of low energy, this had a more fun style of absurdity to it. In fact, in a lot of ways, Cantalot Boutique seemed to be setting up the stage for this episode. I loved Rarity throughout this piece. Rainbow Dash was uh, there, but not really as funny or uh, energetic. This was all Rarity's show as part of Rarity Month. I love that they added her love of crime novels to her uh, character. No longer just, oh, fashion, 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 clothing comments, clothing comments. No, she loves a good crime story. I will say that this, once again, hindered my view of the Wonder Bulls. They... These yahoos never seem to actually work right. He said the Y word. Oh no. <laughs> Yahoo. <laughs> why, why say why? Why? Because they, they, because Rainbow Dash doesn't know better. And as for me, well, how, how would I put this? After coming off, uh, Cantaloupe Boutique, we got this. And like Silver said, Rarity Month. Uh, I, at first I didn't know what to expect. Probably a bad ripoff of um, Detective Conan, or in the States they call it Case Close, was it? Uh huh. Uh huh. So you got that, and so probably maybe a kiddie version of it, but no. Somehow the people at DHX or the people who wrote the pony show did their own spin on the whole thing and made it 
awesome. I just love the whole feeling of the show, the whole team, the whole what you call this word uh, atmosphere. Yeah, atmosphere. Because like you won't expect a black and white thing or black and white scene to appear on screen, but they did it. Like they did the whole film noir thing, and that's that's just awesome. That's just amazing. Like film noir all the way. And that music done by Will Anderson is just like, oh god, that's oh, I I I'm gushing, I'm I'm loving it. What you want to say is it's so smooth, I can't take it. Oh, I'm sliding over the chair. Oh man, over the place. But you say that they could have made a, they could make it like Detective, Detective Conan. They kind of blew all of their anime cards on that Scare Master episode. So they, they cannot put more anime references in the show ever again. Oh, no, they could, they could, they could. <laughs> oh my gosh. This episode is, to me, without a doubt, the best of the, the Rory Trilogy. That I, that's how I like to call it, the Rory Trilogy. That we had during the month of, uh, September. It was, so much fun to see something so cinematic and so involving that it, 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 it's one of those episodes where I forget that I'm watching an episode. It feels so great. And film noir is one of my favorite genres. Everything, everything in this episode was perfect. Except, and I am going to sound like a broken record because everybody has said this already for the Wonderballs. But we're going to go into detail later on when we, uh, when we talk about the episode scene by scene. But yeah. This episode is great. I think I've watched it over 20 times. Rarity looming over the Canterlot Guards <laughs> is one of the best achievements ever put together in this show. It's just awesome. I love this episode. Absolutely love it. But I'm going to go into detail later when we start talking about it. But from then on, it's just, it's spoiler territory. And there's been a mystery kind of story. We're going to spoil the horse apples out of it, so you guys watch it. If you haven't watched the episode yet, stop this review. And uh, what, what are you doing here? You shouldn't be listening to us. Go watch the episode. It's awesome. And then come back and keep listening to us. Hey, James, if they worry about spoilers, they should worry about last week's spo- episode review. <laughs> no, you're talking about the episode that came out, like, before <laughs> the episode, actually? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder who's to blame for that. I wonder who's the culprit. Anyway. <laughs> but anyway, uh, it, it, that was the first time that we jumped the gun and got a review out before. <laughs> like, we got it fast. Woo! It's, it's Halloween. We have to get it out, man. Oh, Come on. That's scary. Oh well. But yes, let's talk about the episode. And from then on, from now on, spoilers. We start right where we left it on the previous episode. We start in, in the Canterlot Boutique. Where Rarity and Sassy Saddles are setting up a new line of clothes inspired by one of Rarity's favorite mystery novels. And there he erupts, interrupts Rainbow Dash as uh, making sure that Rarity is going to attend uh, the dinner that they're going, pre- they're going to prepare for the celebration they're going, to, they're going to have on the next day to open the new garden, right? In the castle. Yes, this counts as affairs of state, opening a garden. Princess Twilight opened up communication with a country far to the north. What have you done, Celestia? Oh, I opened a garden. Well, she does have a thousand years worth of experience under her belt, so this is a cakewalk for her. <laughs> cake, she loves cake. And I'm bored now. <laughs> I, I, I guess that after a thousand times that you open a garden, you have opened them so many times. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you know... So- uh, Celestia's probably nodding off at these things. <laughs> Maybe she's learned to sleep with her eyes open. Probably. But, you know... Uh, she never sleeps. She never rests. Yeah. But, you know, I'm I'm really thinking about the whole setup for this one. Because the introduction of uh, Sassy Saddles, they being at the Cantalot Boutique, seems like a nice touch and all. But the real question is, has this taken a few days or a few months after the incident or like is this the same or the next day could be a few days knowing how this show seems to uh, go at breakneck speed I would say it's at least the same week Mm. (laughs) or it could be a year later oh no 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 no, no. (laughs) we didn't mention okay Uh, probably this is going to be jumping the gun way further but uh the, the the episode we got before Halloween was heartwarming, and after heartwarming is 
Halloween. So it was like, what? Basically, don't try to put a chronology on it. Yeah, I yeah. guess. It's not, it's not, uh, worth it <laughs> to make a, a chronological order out of it. People were pulling off straws from season one trying to, uh, follow the chronological order of it. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Uh, the show was made to be enjoyed out of order. You don't need to watch previous episodes to watch others. And this one is a good strength of it. <laughs> uh, by the way, the dresses on the previous, I didn't, I don't think I mentioned the dresses on the previous episode, but I need to mention the dresses on the previous episode and on this one because they are awesome. And, it's great how they introduce the dresses uh, on this scene that then Rarity is going to be wearing later on in the episode. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Establishing them. That's cool. Then she says that she got those dresses inspired by her favorite uh, detective novels, which is a great touch. I mean, do you know how sometimes Rarity is seen as the, oh, she only likes romance novels. She only likes novels where... Uh, where ponies fall in love with each other and all that, and he's like, no, no, not in this one. She likes, she likes detective stories, well, which would be bad, would be great, because she is all about detail, attention to detail. Well, it depends really, because most of the team that I'm looking at, Rarity, like her inspired by dress, it seems that her detective novels are based around love too. Oh, I thought you imply it, Norman, that a detective cannot dress scantily unless they want to get someone seducted. Uh, it's film noir, man. Like, think about it. It's one of those movies. I don't, I don't see those dresses as very scantily. No, I'm not saying scantily. Yeah. It's like, nor do I. There's a love interest involved. That's all the thing. Well, the, you can mix and match. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm-hmm. True, totally. True. So, have you played the Alain Noir? Oh, I played it, man. I played it. It was fun. Every female character in that, in that game <laughs> dress great. Yep. It's, it's ridiculous. Even the people that are poor dress awesome yeah. in that game. But the problem after that is studio shut down. <laughs> yeah. Uh, never again. Good game, but never again. <laughs> uh, we're jumping off topic. Let's get back on track, guys. A little bit, yeah. So, when when we see Rainbow Dash erupting and all that, that's that's the other thing that this episode does differently from from the others we've seen this season so far. There's only two main six in this episode. Mm-hmm. They had such a brief cameo when Rarity's boutique opened, so now they're completely absent. This is what only the third or fourth episode that never features Twilight. Mm-hmm. Well, this makes sense, really, because come on. It's an event where Rainbow Dash is inviting Rarity, and I think the only reason why she's inviting Rarity is just because, well, Rarity has a place at Canterlot. So yeah, probably, I don't know. Which is strange, and Rain- why? And and Rainbow will never admit it, but she needs a cheering section. Oh, true, true. Oh, she definitely does. I mean, come on. Although, it it is great. We rarely had any um any interaction between these two alone. Like, we, we have seen... Uh, Rainbow Dash with Applejack and Rarity with Applejack and, uh, and Twilight with Pinkie Pie and all that, but we haven't seen Rainbow Dash and Rarity all that often. In fact, I'll say that we didn't even have uh, seen them in the comics, uh, together. So, to have these two, uh, have some interaction, that is pretty neat. Mm-hmm. Definitely fuel for all the shippers out there. Yay. <laughs> But after Rainbow Dash leaves, she uh, Rarity gets visited by the what I like to call the Amazon pony. <laughs> <laughs> no man. That brings her the wrong order, and uh, she manages to like sweet talk him into making another order for her. Uh, sweet and, talk nothing. She if she knows what she's doing. Yeah, play will be playing, yo. Yeah. I, this wink, is, wink, wink. This is probably my least favorite element of Rarity's uh, personality. The fact that basically, if you have a Y chromosome, you are her plaything. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's but, great. Teach seduction to a young audience. Good on you, kid. Uh, well, I don't know what you're talking about. Sorry, is it getting hot in here or something? And, uh, oh. uh, Sorry. Uh, I don't know. Okay, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I do find the flirting of rarity rather not disturbing, not troubling, but. Rather entertaining. I, I do like that she's the one who's willing to pull off the flirt card. But yeah, she knows how to play it. And I think she, we've seen that before in season two in the Iron Will episode. 
we seen that too. So yeah. Yeah, she, she did. She talked that uh, Poindexter. That that Poindexter yeah. into into giving him the the Sparagus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and the dragon almost getting it to leave its horde for her. Uh-huh, mm-hmm. And it one, is part yeah. of it is part of her personality. <laughs> then again, Rarity has always been the character that like she can be the most level headed and a sensible character of the entire group and she can be the most ridiculous. Also very much like uh like Tabitha is herself. Because Tabitha can be super sensible and super level headed, but she can also be really silly. Mm-hmm. True that. So I think that I think that is also part of the of the actor getting in getting seeped into the character. And I think in this episode the 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 flirting doesn't always work. Like I think in the Iron Will episode it doesn't work at all. In this one with the theme they are going and the, the subject matter that you're going for, you know, the whole film noir, uh, detective story kind of thing, you are always, always, by definition of the genre, going to have some flirting between the detective and the sexy lady, or if the sexy lady is the detective, the detective and everyone else. But, but I like how they establish this, because every single part of this scene, the costumes, the flirting, the rainbow dash being a bit more brush and anything, is going to have relevance later on in the episode. Like, this is not just, let's do this because it's funny. No, let's do this because it's funny, and then it's going to have an impact. And I do enjoy uh, Ceci here, because, well, she's keeping the ship afloat. <laughs> Almost as she, uh, she is at least at the, giving the audience a chance to have exposition. Yes, well, she's doing a good job. Yay on you, Ceci, yay. Yeah, and she she's she remains a very likable character. Mm-hmm. At least in my in my eyes, I haven't seen a lot of fun out of her. Actually, it makes, it makes me a bit sad. No, not yet but... because we haven't seen her good qualities yet. Like you have to remember, after Equestria Girls one, there were not many good art of uh, Sunset, but after she got her uh, good role in Rainbow Rocks, art all over the place, man. People weren't too keen about the whole mean girl, oh, yeah. uh, mean girl persona. Yeah. But so after this introduction scene, we go straight into the into the dinner. And uh, I have to say, better there is there hasn't been a better way to get children to eat broccoli than this scene. Yeah. Uh, Rainbow Dash actually likes broccoli. No. Oh, well, our parents across the world see kids. Rainbow Dash likes broccoli. Why don't you? Oh God, I remember <laughs> a story here. Uh, it's, it's not mine, but I heard it from another brony. But okay, his, the, the setup's like this. Um, this brony, he went to the store and he saw this little girl. She's throwing a temper tantrum, and her mother goes, "What would Princess Celestia think if you do this?" And she behaved. Ha. <laughs> So yeah, blackmailing children with horses in a different way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it wow. works. No, th- thanks, Hasbro. Thanks, DHX. Now we have to eat our broccoli's. Great. Mm. <laughs> Curse you. Let's talk about how uh, adorable Dash is during this whole scene because as uh, she's gobbling down some uh, some broccoli. Right, he meets up with Wind Rider, mm-hmm. who she doesn't recognize at first. Uh, she doesn't recognize who R- Wind Rider is, but Rainbow Dash fills her in on the on on who this guy is. He's a living legend of the Wonder Balls, uh, with holder of several records, and a pretty snazzy kind of guy. I mean, yes, look at him. Mm-hmm. He has the profile of Eric Roberts. <laughs> Honestly speaking, I would have thought that was Ardi's dad. With the with the color of his coat, yeah, yeah. If we hadn't seen Rainbow's dad in a different mm, an episode, yeah. But I mean, look at it. Like, think about it. Like, if you haven't seen RD's dad in the first place, that would be like, Dad, what are you doing here? Oh, I'm so embarrassed. Stop, stop writing on, stop hitting on Larity. Ah. Oh no, that wouldn't be. It wouldn't that be super messed up? <laughs> like the one who said that Rainbow Dash is her own father. <laughs> <laughs> Total reveal of the episode, Righty reveals that it, Wind Rider is Dash's dad. <laughs> She's like, no! <laughs> or yes. I mean, wow, my dad's really cool. <laughs> and my mom is very good. That's some words for her. Oh, oh no. <laughs> no. Oh my god. Uh, fan fiction. Away you go. Fan fiction. Do it really happen. Make it happen. Yep. <laughs> But honestly, uh, let's carry on after that. Like, oh. but yeah, 
that, that's just absolutely gobsmacked that Wind Rider is, is there and they're talking to him and everything. And, and uh, he's, uh, she's like, oh, I will never ever break your record. And then Spitfire is like, oh no, come on. Spitfire, she comes out of nowhere. And she's like, oh no, don't be so humble. Come on, you are, you could totally beat his record. Now, how many oink, times can you, oink. how many times can you say to, uh, Rainbow Dash, don't be so humble? <laughs> That's not enough. Isn't this the first time? <laughs> first time ever. Yeah. Yeah, I have but never it, seen her like this apologetic. Or humble. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, Wade Rider, if you know the plot of this, you're like, okay, this guy's the antagonist for the episode. Unfortunately, if you know anything about mysteries and how this show works, you know this guy's the bad guy right off the bat. Honestly speaking, on my end, personally, I didn't. Like, I was thinking, who could it possibly be? Until a few parts near the middle and, yeah, <laughs> there's no mystery anymore. But I, I think what import- what's important here is the journey to the end. <laughs> Oh yeah, the journey, but, the journey is fun. It's just that, uh, this is not a show that makes you go, whoa, I never saw that coming. Oh, true that. Except for, uh, the invasion of the Cantalot Castle season two and the... Uh, actually, yeah, I still saw that coming. Really? The whole change thing? Yeah, yeah, same. You, you, same you expected here. the change thing? Really? The whole change? Come on. The change. I, ex- I expected the, the cadence to be an imposter. Yeah, but not that kind of imposter. Like, oof, that transformation, yo. Considering, uh, the changelings, my opinion of them has, has varied over the course of time. Eh, true that. They've been awesome, silly, awesome again. We'll we'll get back to the siege of the Crystal Empire at some yeah, point. They, they, yeah. Well, oh, don't say anything. I didn't read any of this. Oh, any yeah. of those issues? Ah. The, the siege thing has a lot of holes in their story. Oh, <laughs> no, man. You didn't just. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I'm going to oh, I wish I could retire you. He's been on a holier than thou attitude. <laughs> I hate you both. Well, yes. We're white. We're white. Need the gap in the show. <laughs> uh, <sighs> let's plug those holes. I think we completely, completely got out of the to- the, the the context, and it's weird. I thought that we enjoyed this episode. Yeah. Let's talk about this episode. Shall yeah, we? yeah, we do. Here's one of the things that if we enjoy an episode a lot, we tend not to talk about it because we don't want to bash it. Well, no, you can totally bash something that you like. But, uh, you don't need to like treat it like it's some sort of like sacrosanct. Uh, a piece of fiction. You don't need to do uh, that. True, but like I said, like if we really, really enjoyed it a lot, sometimes we try not to. Oh, I don't want to hurt my favorite show. Uh, I don't want to hurt my favorite show. I don't want to hurt my wife. Oh, <laughs> yeah, no. but carry on. Let's go. Let's go. Ne- next day at the practice. I guess we well, should give credit that Celestia appears. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Goodness knows he. Oh, she even looks kind of smitten with Easy uh, Easy Glider. Easy Glider. I thought it was. Oh wow. It wind, was it Windrider? I forget. Wind Rider. James? What's his name? Yeah, it, it is Wind Rider. Oh, yeah. Commander Easy Glider <laughs> is one of the founders of the Wonderbolts. Yeah. We're all over the place. Well, all I can say is, uh, Celestia looks a little spitting with the dude. Oh my. Well, Celestia does show up, and, uh, Wind Rider's smooth, smooth, like smooth chest. I'm slipping all over yeah, the of place. Of course, he's, he's smooth with the ladies. I mean, come on. Mm-hmm. So, Rarity and Rainbow Dash goes to bed, and, Rainbow Dash is sleeping with Spitfire. Alone. She's sleeping alone. <laughs> She's not sleeping with Steve, with Spitfire. We're not talking about that kind of... This is not that kind of story, Norman. This is the same this room. Is, this is not uh, Dash Academy. Oh, yeah. Oh, that, that was a good show, too. But that's with Firefly. Mm. It's not... It, it's it's not... It's not a Rainbow Dash Academy. No, it's not. Yeah. But no, they're not sleeping in the same room. They're sleeping on the same hallway. Really? And that's... Yes, yes, yeah, yes. Same way. We, oh, okay. We were, we were talking about the practice though, oh, yeah. because this is the point where, uh, Dash and Rarity, they're watching the practice and Soren comes to them and he's like, hey, uh, Spitfire is, uh, is gone. Apparently her mother is sick. So she had to go take care of her. Well, uh, but, first, but, but first Soren said, you know, if you weren't talking with Rarity, you'd be talking with me. <laughs> oh my, the ship. Oh, oh dear. Yes, the the Soren Dash shippers are going squee. <laughs> oh my! This doesn't prove anything. Uh, but I just love that rarity boop on Rainbow Dash. She's so cute. Me likey. Yeah, the interaction between these two is priceless. Yep. Like now and later on on the episode. That's that's awesome. So because the Spitfire is missing, 
Sauron tells Rainbow Dash that she's going to be the one to replace Spitfire because she's in the re she's the reserves. And lo and behold, Rainbow Dash gets super, absolutely excited. Come on. That's adorable. Yep, she's doing her thing. She's doing her thing. Adorable Dash. Yep. Adorable Dash. And, and Sauron is like, Sauron is like, ah, uh, Rainbow Dash. And Ray is like, shh, darling, let her have this. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Yep. Oh my gosh. But not so awesome because in the next scene, uh, we get a visit from, uh, Spitfire's mom. <laughs> and they're like, hang on a minute, what are you doing here? You're supposed to be sick. Hang on, who told Spitfire that her mom was sick? And then all the looks glare onto Rainbow Dash. Oh. And, and this who is where the, this is where the Wonder Bolts start to fall apart. Oh, also. Yes. We should talk about this. Yes, please, I want to know. We should talk about this. Okay, I'm going to make the question, and we should make the discussion. Why does Rainbow Dash still want to be part of the Wonderbolts? Given their lack of loyalty and trust, they are not presenting the best versions of themselves. No. Uh, I think, really, what Rainbow Dash loves is flying and being the best. The Wonderbolts are seen as the best flyers. Therefore, she will join the Wonderbolts. I think they're more a means to an end than a goal in themselves. That said, the Wonderbolts will benefit greatly from having Rainbow join their ranks. She'll improve the morale, honesty, and ethics. But I, I do question what will Rainbow gain from joining these guys. Hmm, true. The way I see it here is, like, with Rainbow wanting to still wanting to join the Wonderbolts, like, A, that's her lifelong dream, and B, she wants to prove to herself that she can do it and she's not a quitter. Because if she just stops and I don't want to do this anymore, she'll just be a quitter and that's not her. I don't see her quitting. She'll go through rain and storm to prove to herself and others that she can be a Wonderbolt. She's halfway there, but anyway. I think that's one of the points of her being there still. And what will the Wonderbolts gain? Well, looking at how this is going, she'll probably be the new captain for the Wonderbolts, the new head honcho for the team. Yeah, well, it kind of makes me wonder where, uh, how the Wonderbolts became this kind of like a easily, uh, easy, easy on the accusation, easy to jump to conclusions, and not very friendly. Because look at look at how quick they all turn on Rainbow Dash because she's the newbie. Well, it kind of makes sense. And give, giving her that ultimatum, I mean, if it if it if it was me in this position, and suddenly we find I find out that it was one of them who uh, uh who not blackmail. What is the word for it? Suspect. Um, accused mm, me, yeah. I guess, of being the one to do the crime that he committed. <laughs> Well, I will drop the entire group right right away. I mean, I, I wouldn't trust any of them. Well, like I mentioned, as far as I can kick them. Well, like I mentioned no. before, it's the part of Dash that doesn't want to quit or doesn't know how to quit. Yeah, I guess it comes with the stubbornness. Yeah, and you have to remember also that they have a twenty-two minute episode to run, so this is the quickest way to do things. Yeah, well, that's not an excuse in this case. Yeah, kind of. This is about characterization. You can totally have the rainbow, the 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 Wonder Bolts. You could have the the Wonder Bolts divided between we don't think it was Rainbow Dash, but we think it was Rainbow Dash. Like people siding with Dash and people siding with someone else. I don't know. You could you can have so many different ways you can deal with this issue. And I con I consider this an issue. It's like this is the only problem that I find in this episode. I love this episode. This episode's great, but this is the part that makes me go, mm, Yeah, true, uh, true Yeah. <laughs> like, there is no perfect episode. Uh, this one is as close as to perfect as we can get, but mm -hmm. this, this, this flaw. From what we, <gasps> what we have to deal with, like, the middle part with the whole Wonderbolt accusing Dash and giving her the ultimatum, it's not perfect, but that's the setup we have. That's the stakes that is given. That's what she has to deal with. And, well, it's episode ago. If it wasn't for this, we wouldn't have <coughs> the rest of the episode, which is absolutely excellent. Yeah, I mean, it's a different kind of story then, but hey, uh, yeah. we're 
we're supposed to get a film noir, and this is how we get it. And film noir goes, because uh, when Sorin tells Rainbow Dash, you have how much? One hour? Two hours? Until Speedfire comes back? Uh, like, you, have, a, you have until the uh, the actual show. Unknown yes, end. we don't know how long that... We don't know how long that is, but yes, she has a time limit to find out where Speedfire is. So wait, there's a friendship problem then. So it'll be like 30 minutes. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But yes, so there erupts Rarity in her best attire, dressed as Shadow Spade, <sighs> saying that she's going to take care of this and she's going to find out who did it. Does anyone have a Carmen San Diego feel to this? Well, that that's going the opposite direction, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, if this was Carmen San Diego, Rarity would be stealing <laughs> the entire castle of Canterlot. Oh, wow. That show was ridiculous. How could she pull off those things? Anyway, <laughs> uh, so, yes, and what follows, what follows is film or segments broken with pieces of uh, the uh, reality, mm-hmm. narrated by Rarity herself, with... Uh, one of the best musical compositions of the entire show. Let's not kid ourselves. This is Will so Anderson good, yeah. at his yeah. best. Th- this is when I mentioned that Will Anderson did a great job. Like, previously in most previous episodes, we don't get to hear Will Anderson's work that much because, well, they're covered by voices or other things. But in this one, this is, uh, this ins, ins, mm, insensuate? What's the one? How do I say it? Insensuate? I guess accentuates, accent, accentuates, accentuates, highlights. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna highlights. Accentuates. Highlights. I think highlights is the word that you're looking for, So this really highlights how good of a music man he is. So wow, like just listening to this. And one a fun fact about me, I like the sound of a trumpet. Like the trumpet is a Wonderful instrument, but it doesn't get much love. Well, it does get a lot of love in this episode. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. Oh, I love it a lot. <laughs> so, they start investigating Spitfire's room, and Rarity finds an envelope with uh, the letter inside, right? And some rainbow hair in there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Which makes Rainbow Dash start to lose hope that she's going to be la- let out of this. Um, and... <laughs> <laughs> it gets to the point where Rarity is just looking at herself in the mirror, narrating that she's like, "What are you doing?" Oh, just wondering. <laughs> oh wow! And just looking at how Rarity is, like, for people who don't know how investigation story works, like, she is doing the work, she is doing finding the clues, but at the same time, from Rainbow Dash's point of view, she's just derping around, just looking at fabric. Like, Rarity, stop! Because you're supposed to help me, not. Just look at stuff. This is rarity. She's always been just a little uh, easily distracted. Yeah, easily absent-minded. Mm. As she's walking on the hallway and she's like, Oh, I'm, uh, I, I'm coming up with clues and ideas. And oh, look at that curtain. It just got out of, out of its place. It's just unwrapped. Oh, that's, that's uh, such, such a shame. And uh, she's like, Oh, who cares about the curtain? Mm. And, they, and then they see three guards. And these three are kind of a, a design revelation. Celestia stormtroopers actually have diversity. Which is, I yeah, the, they are not just brown and white and different and the same shape. They have variety. I'm no, no. I'm thinking like, what? Why? What? Maybe I'm nitpicking here, but aren't the guards supposed to be uniform, like all white or all black or all depending on which guard you're working for? I mean. Wow, That's racist. racist. <laughs> I mean, no, it's physicist. That's a different. Uh, I mean, come on, you uh, know what I mean, right? Like, <laughs> no, it's well, you know, from season two and season one, where we all saw the same. Like, Pegasi are white, unicorns are brown. They are all divided into two. They are always different. Uh, no, they are never different. They're always the same. I guess that uh, with great budgets come. Great variety of character yeah, designs. True. So we can afford now to see characters that are just off model. It's, it's just that it's. I mean, this is a minor nitpick on my end because when okay, when you go to the army, you have a okay nitpick. The armor is that okay. Never mind. Moving on. No, no. Ah, no. Here's the thing. I call them Celestia stormtroopers because they are all identical. 
and they're all equally useless in a fight. <laughs> yes, yes, but, yes. If they had blasters, they would all wish them. Yeah. And, the, and these three aren't really all that good themselves. Yeah. Uh, the, th- the thing is, in a large group shot, the power of a military is in uniformity. It's why we, they wear, you know, uniforms. It's why everyone expects soldiers of the future to wear helmets that obscure skin tone, facial differences, all that to create that somewhat frightening image of a single unified identity. Mm-hmm. I, either that or maybe they want the helmets to protect themselves. Oh, that too. Yeah, yeah, well, there's that know. too. There's that too. Yeah, but the point of the matter is when when you're in... Maybe I'm playing a lot of strategy games or whatever it is, but when you build an army, everything must be the same. They have, They must be the same. That's the thing. It's like a piece on the chessboard. All your pawns are the same. All your kings, knights, you can't have two kings. Like all your. Never mind. <laughs> We're talking about these three guys getting an interrogation. Yeah. And, yeah. A seduction. Okay. Yeah, okay. Can somebody please argue with me how this is not a kid show anymore? Oh, no, man. No, man. Like... <laughs> <laughs> I have a mighty need to draw rarity on a fainting couch. Oh, wow. Well. Oh, my gosh. That, that scene was. Excellent. Oh, yeah. I mean, Rainbow Dash was going a bit too strong with how shouting. Like, you don't shout at the Royal Guard. Like, that's that's a big no-no. I mean, inter- getting to integrate them is one thing. Shouting at them? No. But what rarely... However, they do they do reveal that Dash was the only one that was coming through that hallway uh, all night. So, there goes another another weight of evidence against Dash's, uh, Dash's case. mm mm-hmm. Until Rarity whispers in their ears and gives them a little caress. <laughs> oh my god, Rarity, what are you doing? Something tells me that the word before wasn't boring, but hard. Oh, wait. Actually, you, you kind of expect the table to, to shake a little boom. <laughs> Boink. <laughs> you know what? If this show was on Cartoon Network, it would have done that. Oh, wow. Well, depend on the writer, my friend. <laughs> depend on the writer. Oh, it's okay. Oh, well. <laughs> Give it to Disney Channel. I'm pretty sure they will allow that. No. Kind of thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, this this actually does have a a, a purpose. It, like so far, if you notice, every single thing that Rarity is doing, as ridiculous and silly and as self-referential as it is, uh, it does lead to to uh, more clues. a point in the story. Yeah, more clues, even if it doesn't look like. So the the guards tell her that they got distracted by cake, and somebody gave them a a piece of cake. And uh, through her, of course, uh, interrogation techniques, uh, they uh, Rarity figures out that it can only come from one bakery. And uh, so they go there to the bakery and, uh, uh, well, avoiding the crew of Sherlock that's shooting an episode <laughs> on the other table over oh, there. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> that was great. I mean, we have a Sherlock, uh, and we have a Sherlock pony on MLP now. That's brilliant. Yeah. Well, is it, I haven't watched Sherlock. Well, wait, I've watched uh, BBC Sherlock. Is that what the the puppy face and the B cutie mark guys are supposed to be? Yeah. Yes, that that's that's Sherlock and Watson. Uh the the puppy face cutie mark is a reference to a smiley face. It's not a puppy face. It's a smiley face ponified, because there is a smiley face graffitied on uh on the basement of Watson's apartment, or not on the lobby of Watson's apartment, and the B cutie mark on Sherlock is because. After Sherlock gave up investigating, he became a beekeeper. <laughs> okay. In the in the novels, that's it's it is a ponified version of Benedict Cumberbatch. Yes, but the cutie mark is a reference to the actual Sherlock Holmes novels. Ah, uh, see that one went completely over my head. Wow, where did you get this info, is, man? Uh oh, my friend Darren is oh. a big fan of Sherlock, and he told me uh, about that, and he was like. No way! No way! Expletive, expletive, swear word, swear word, expletive. Oh my god, I can't believe they did a reference to Sherlock. This is amazing! Wow. And I'm like, oh, that's so cool. Because it, it, it also flew over my head. In fact, later on, when we see a flashback to the, to the scene where, uh, we, sh- we see the pony taking the, the cake away, Sherlock and Watson are chasing after Moriarty. <laughs> yes. And Moriarty's cutie mark, I think it's also a reference to something. Let me look on the wiki. Oh, wow. But anyway, we, we, we will pass that. We will pass that. But, but it, it does make a, it, it does make a lot of sense that we have a Sherlock mm, reference true. in this episode about investigating. It makes oh, a lot of true. sense. But 
yes, Rarity meets with the with the cake's pony, and uh, she inter she interrogates her about who was taking the, who took the the cake away, and the cake's pony she's like, well, someone like your friend took it. <laughs> The, 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 ra- the raspy boys, and it was a mare. Remember that? That it was a mare, the one who took the cake. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was okay. the one moment that made me doubt whether it was Windrider who, uh, committed the crime. It's like, wait, could it be that, uh, Spitfire just wanted a personal day? But then that meant, that would mean she framed Rainbow Dash for her own absence, in which case, yeah, the Wonderbolts are awful. Yeah. I want to save the speculation for this part here till the end when it's revealed who. But I, I just want to give out theories till the end for this part here. Remember, guys, I want to hear what your your theory hit canon thinking would be. Okay, no problem. <laughs> I I actually do have a theory about why the cake pony reminded the remember the uh, one who took the cake. As a female. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But later on, but later on. We, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that later on. She does remember that she had a, 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 a scarf that got stained with the cake. She does remember that. And that's where Rarity is like, oh, hang on a minute. I think I know who did it. Let's go to the third act. And, 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 and I will make the big reveal. So they meet at the castle again, where all the Wonderbolts are still waiting. No sign of Spitfire yet. And then Rarity is like, I know who did it. It was Wind Rider. Oh. And everyone is like, uh, what? How? How, how do you back that up? And Rarity is like, I have lots of clues. And Rainbow Dash is like, no, you don't. All you did was focus on silly details. Oh, but that's the thing there, Dash. Investigating is all about the silly little details. And so, uh, Rarity starts listing all the details that she had been mentioning before. She talks about the envelope that had the uh, rainbow hair inside, and she's like, these hairs were were not, they, they didn't fell off, they were cut off. I mean, nobody loses hair in a chunk like that, like like this. And also, the the envelope, it 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 smells like the cologne that this guy was wearing. Juniper Phoenix is the name of the cologne now that I remember. She keeps this in more details that the curtains were fly uh, were open, and the, that the guards were lured out of the out of their position with cake. A, a cake that could only be obtained in a, at a, a at a cake shop, and that's that's uh, in the uh, that's the moment where we see again the uh, the Sherlock ponies walking by, running by. So yeah, we get to see Moriarty, gay. Get to see Moriarty chased by Sherlock. Now none of these cutie marks are triggering any of my um, my memories. Yeah, I think so you that... need to be a hardcore Sherlock fan. Yeah, uh, this one I love the Sherlock on BBC. I've watched the the movies and read some of the books, but I can't say any of this triggered. Uh, oh my gosh, that's so and so. True. I mean, honestly, like what um, James's friends say about Sherlock have the BQD mark. Yeah, it does make sense. He was a beekeeper. Something I don't know. But either way, it's it's now revealed that Wind Rider is the guilty party. And people have contacted me comparing this to, uh, I did a review of a TV show called Brave Star oh, yeah, once that. with a fallen idol. Same premise here. Uh, a hero to, to one of our main characters basically lets pride ruin their career. Wind Rider was so jealous of his, of the idea that Dash could surpass his speed record that he tried to remove her rather than being being proud of being a part of history or setting the mark high. So there is a really good uh, moral here about, you know, the the danger of pride or uh, not being willing to just ex- celebrate others' abilities. It does say a lot because with how competitive most of the Wonderbolts are, it's kind of natural for Wayne Rider to get very... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, clinging to his record. Insecure. Yeah, insecure is the best word. I guess insecurity is that. Like, it, you, you just can't let go. And to the way that all the clues fell in place was just amazing. Like, if you haven't been keeping track of all the details that has been going on, like all the clues that Rarity has gathered, it's like, okay, first, the envelope was had a distinct smell of the cologne. 
two, it was Rainbow Dash's main. It was cut off in a specific, well, it was cut off. Like there, there was a clean cut. It didn't fell off naturally. And there was the curtains. In a castle like that, I don't think curtains would be that way. And the last piece of the puzzle was the stain, uh, the stain on, um, Wind Rider's scarf that was mentioned by the bakery pony and the way that Wind Rider's tying up his scarf in a different pattern from normal to cover up the stain. So yes, the way that Rarity gathered all the clues and presented it as evidence was awesome. Yeah, they did a good job of establishing things, even uh, trying to remove a stain from Rarity's clothing, uh, set the stage for why Wind Rider couldn't just wash the stain out of his own scarf. So yeah, this episode, even though you, you, it's like you said before, we know the outcome, but we enjoy the journey. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's like Mass Effect 3. No comment, <laughs> as I never finished Mass Effect 3, but now I don't have to because I know everyone's so disappointed by it. <laughs> uh, but still, it's a journey. But uh now it's time for Rainbow to show her stuff. She has to fly all the way to the Crystal Empire and back, which, considering Scootaloo did that. Did she? She, on her scooter, oh, she carried yeah. the she carried the Crusaders all the way to the Empire. So, not sure that's as big an accomplishment. It's kind of fluid. No, there, there's, there's, there's a big difference, Silver. There's a huge difference between what Scootaloo did and what Rainbow Dash did. And you want to know what the difference is? One has scooter. No, musical montage. Musical montage. Musical montage makes everything faster. Every, well, yeah, just look at Magical Mystery Cure and uh, Crusaders of the Lost. <laughs> yeah, Box. see. But, uh, regardless, Dash does break Windrider's record, get, and I guess so does Spitfire. Although, what's really impressive about Spitfire is that she's sweating through her uniform. It's so tight, it's like she's wearing nothing at all. <laughs> nothing at all. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. <laughs> oh gosh, no. Uh, but still, <laughs> but still, that's the setup. Like, we got Spitfire back, and, the show is about to start, and Wind Rider's going to be on show, right? No, they apparently... Okay, this is kind of curious. There was a big debate at BronyCon, mm-hmm. or at least a, pe- a presentation, are the Wonderbolts a military organization? Mm-hmm. Now, they clearly say bylaws in this, which I don't think bylaws apply to military organizations. You have uh, codes, you have uh, military law, which I think is the same as codes. But I don't think bylaws are a part of that factor. So the Wonderbolts continue to be a mystery. They are the Blue Angels, the, the elite flyer dragon attack force, but they have the structure of a private organization. Oh, God, maybe they're privatized military oh service. Oh, my God, Hideo Kijimo's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, basically, he's... Windrider has lost his place in Wonderbolt history. I wouldn't, that's a bit harsh, but I guess it's true. Well, he did just try to sabotage yeah, it. True that. Uh, so now there's an opening, so Rainbow Dash gets another celebratory dance. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let her have it. <laughs> I don't know, all we need is a song singing, we are the champions, my friends. Uh, but, that, that's true, I, I'm still fixed on, is the Wonderbolts private military or they're just military? And what did the people at BronyCon say? Well, they felt, they believe that they were primarily a military organization. They lack the teamwork and cohesion that is that the military tries to instill. But they are a military organization at the end of the day. This throws just a little bit of a wrinkle into that. But ultimately, I do view them as the Blue Angels, which are, I believe, a division of the Air Force. That's what the show's been trying to parody as. Like, the the Wonderbolts are the Blue Angels of the Pony World. They they fly, they do stunts, and they are well-trained at flying. And the Blue Angels, if I do understand right, are the best of the best in American military air force. They fly for thousands of hours. They have worth of experience on flying a jet plane and turning and spinning and doing all those crazy fun stuff that we love to see. I'm thinking that's the parody of that in the pony world. Except the ponies can walk and talk and fly. And fly. Very important that they fly. So, do you have that too? So, I don't know. Is the Blue Angels privatized? 
No, I, I believe they are a part of the American Air Force. Hmm, okay. I don't know who, I have not researched this, I, I have no proper idea, but they seem to be uh, a part of the military itself. So that ending though, like Rainbow Dash gets to fly, <laughs> yes. And Wind Rider gets to join with Lightning Dust in the We Hate Rainbow Dash Club. <laughs> At least he got he. I, at least I uh, he got his uh, character art completed. Oh. If anything, his character art was to be a jerk face. Oh yeah. And well, at least we got Rarity. She's so cute. She's still in that film noir stick. Like she's talking to herself. This is. Of course she is. <laughs> oh wow. And yeah, Spitfire's mom is just like that's nice, dear. <laughs> oh yes, we we didn't talk about Spitfire's mom and. How much she looks like Spitfire. Family traits in Equestria are kind of weird. Uh, not really. Her color tone is a bit... Okay, she has the same mane, but the mane style is a bit different. And the, fl- the way it flows is a bit different. A little bit, but she she looks like... You could tell a physical resemblance, whereas with uh, with Rainbow and her papa, it's it's just the mane. And with Twilight and her parents, it's the style, but not necessarily uh, the colors. So, you know, it's just hard to keep track at times. You know what? If you say the style but not the colors, in in this world, in the human world, that would be enough case for a divorce. <laughs> oh, well. No, I mean, but in the pony world, I think it does make sense because... Okay, I I got no idea what I'm going to say. No, I, I was about to say about genetics and whatnot, but no, no, no. That, that would be just stupid, no. Genetics in a world for, uh, for magical yeah. horses. <laughs> Remember that the cake family... Are both her po- elf ponies and they have a unicorn and a pegasus. <laughs> yeah, so like, I'm gonna drop it. Uh, the the way that Mr. King explained it was reasonable enough. That makes sense. Right? <laughs> and I shift left and right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah. Boy. But anyway, <laughs> the show ends there, and yay! Rainbow Dash gets to fly with the Wonder Balls. Woo! Accomplishing her dream, really. One of her dreams. This is the first time. The, no, it's like we, this is the first time that we see her fly with the Wonder Balls since she was imagining all the way back to season mm-hmm. one. But uh, season one, yeah. But she's this is well technically she's not part of the team. She's just well, she's a reserve, so she's just replacing. Dude, this is one big, big oh, yeah, step. That's true. And I mean, to be honest, this is this is one of the few shows that actually shows the steps to be part of something that is bigger mm-hmm. than you. It's like. Go to the academy, sign up, get in contact with them. Like, first get in contact with them, get to know them, uh, <laughs> save their life also helps. Mm-hmm. Uh, go to the academy, become part of the reserves by approving a, a, a theoretical <laughs> exam. Yeah. It, it does take that long or even yeah. longer. The fact that they are actually going through the motions in, in a, in a kid's show, that's pretty impressive. I mean, that's cool. I mean, first things first, like Rainbow Dash is a Wonder Bolt reserve. And the reserves' jobs are to fill in the blanks, if there are any blanks. And in this case, Windrider was the blank, and she filled that spot. So yay! But now we we want to see what happened next because she, Rainbow Dash is working her way up to the totem pole. So yay! She's working hard. And remember, kids, working hard does give you something. And eat your broccolis. Rainbow Dash does. Also, disgrace your predecessor so that you can improve your own standing. <laughs> uh, no comment there, my friend. Yes, I could put a negative spin on just about anything. <laughs> oh, you negative Nancy. No, no, you're not a negative. Oh, come on, you're not so cynical. Don't, 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 don't put yourself in so much. That's a very dismissive attitude of you. <laughs> what? <laughs> Got you there, James. <laughs> I'm gonna give you this minute. Shut up, Norman. <laughs> Aww. Aww. <laughs> uh, but anyway, episodes end. This is one of the, this is one of the few episodes that actually doesn't end with the MLP theme, but with the, <laughs> we continue with the smooth oh, yeah. jazz mo- uh, motif. No, it's so smooth. Neat. So you can mellow your way out. Okay, but he- here's the, here's the thing that I wanted to save till the very end, which was that one clue that was given by, the baker, the bakery pony. What was going through your mind then? Raspy voice, a mare that that looked like Rainbow Dash. I thought that could be Spitfire, actually. Yeah. Did Spitfire need a day, and she just faked? And Rainbow Dash is maybe a un un uh, willing, well, unintended yeah. victim 
unintended scapegoat. But then I thought, no, that wouldn't make sense. They That wouldn't explain the, the main cutting. But more than that, it just said, God, if that's what they do, the Wonder Bolts really are irredeemable. Mm, yeah. And, and my point of view, when I, when I, when I hit that part, I thought like, oh, it could, could it be that Wind Rider and Spitfire working together just because of something? Like, nobody really likes Spitfire. She's very mean. So that's one thing. So, okay, Spitfire work together, um, just, just disappears. And, I, I don't know. In my head, it worked, but explaining it out loud it sounds dumb. But I don't know. To me, they were working together just to save Windrider's record. And I think Windrider was talking to Spitfire to do that and blah, blah, blah. It didn't happen that way. But that's what's going through my head. What about you, James? Well, I... Did say I did say I had a theory regarding this. Have you guys ever watched a movie based on an Alfred, uh, directed by Alfred Hitchcock, uh, titled "I Saw Everything"? Not me. Okay, it's about a robbery that is witnessed by several people from a uh, from a cafe on the other side of the road where the robbery is happening. So the robbery happens and the police are taking statements, and they ask different people in the restaurant, and each time they ask somebody, they give they, they recreate the scene of the robbery. There is not one that is the same. Yeah, I saw a red car arriving with three people inside and one of them was a woman. Yeah, I saw a blue car arriving, five people inside, they were all guys. Uh, yeah, I saw one single car arriving and it was, uh, it was a guy dressed as a lady. And it's, they never give the same, uh, the, the same test, the same testimony. So I think this is something similar where, because the character was so wrapped up in, in clothes, like, you know, scarf, coat, hat. And he was imitating Rainbow Dash's voice that the cake's pony assumed that it was a female. Mm. And so, that, besides, besides, the, uh, the element of the red herring is also very akin to those film noir movies. Mm-hmm. And here's, here's one thing where people are, well, people might be questioning is, wait, why did the bakery pony say that it was a female pony? Aren't male ponies have supposed to have a different build? Well, if you if you're wrapped up in clothing, I guess, and you you talk in a slightly lighter voice, people tend to make wrong assumptions. Oh, true that, but well, yeah, yeah, you can break you can break the 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 the, the uh, figure and the shape of the body if you cover it in enough clothes. But one thing to note, though, too, that Wind Rider is a wonderful flyer. And most flyers with that kind of caliber are supposed to be lean. So yeah. Oh, so is so is Spitfire. Yeah. Even though even though she uses the standard male body, uh, standard mare uh, body type. Either way, that was just the one time where I thought, well, maybe it's not Wind Rider. But then I thought, nah, it's probably yeah. still him. But still, that that was that was a moment of doubt for the audience. Which is kind of cool if you think about it, because how many times does a show do that to you? Make you question your answer. Well, either way, like you say, it's the journey, not the destination. And so we, we end on a pretty positive note for everyone except Wind oh, Rider. Yes. And fun fact, someone asked, oh, I think Big Jim said that, who likes to see Wind Rider more? Oh yeah, see see him meet up with lightning yeah, dust. Anti Wonder Bolt something like that if I remember right. So yay. Future episode probably? Yay. Maybe. That would be cool. Oh privatized military. So true. Oh god, no. Well, either way, I think we've covered all we can cover in one mo- in one episode. Uh final thought guys, final thoughts. Oh well uh what can I say? It was a fun Light-hearted adventure with a lot of fun. I love how the humor sets up the facts for later. It's it's not... You can't say, oh, that's probably a clue, but it's not a blatant, look, this could be a clue. Dora, the explorer, tells you so. <laughs> mira, mira. <laughs> uh, you're, you're walking... They're walking nearby the clue, and it goes... Dun, 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 dun. Oh, wow. Right, he's so, interrogating the three guards. It goes doubt, lie, truth. <laughs> I had and, you. And so this, and since this uh, ties into Canada Boutique, it also adds appreciation to that episode setup, if only a little. 
So all in all, I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Rarity's had her, Rarity is in wonderful form. Rainbow is a, a great foil to her. I'm still not crazy about Rarity's seduction tactics, but a mm. <laughs> can't argue with the results. True that. True that. Yeah, she will end up breaking through your eyes. I, I see the defenses. Mm. She, will, she will melt your heart. <laughs> so no. And then, oh god, no. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, melt some parts harder than others. Oh no. Uh, <laughs> and as for me, I. I love this episode. For one fact, I like this episode is the smooth jazz. Like, oh god, I mentioned before, I love saxophone music. I love the trumpet. I love, I love those instruments. Like those, those brass instruments. I love them a lot. Like those are jazz. I love jazz. And getting to hear a full episode with jazz, like, oh man, it's so smooth. I'm sliding off the chair. So, besides that, the whole detective plot story was cool. I love detective stories too. And the way that it's telling or the way that it tells the show where, okay, I'm looking for evidence and when I'm about to explain the clues, Rainbow Dash interrupts and everything turns back to color. And if you notice that, when Rarity noticed stuff, noticed clues, she, when, when we think that she's about to explain it, it suddenly goes to color. I do love that subtle hint of, hey, let's get back to the show. Overall, I just love this episode. It's just entertaining. I don't mind watching it again. <laughs> it's one of those episodes that opens itself to uh, uh, watch in a loop over and over again. Besides, it goes all the way to the details. Be- before I give my, my conclusions, you guys did talk about the Moriarty pony. Oh, yeah. when, uh... A bit. We, we oh, didn't yes. really know about him, but we did mention he passed by. Yes, I before before I give my my final thoughts on it, let me break this for a moment. What his cutie mark represents, that's a poisoned apple. Ah. Also a reference to the novels. It's a poisoned apple with a bite taken out of it. Someone just died. Oh yes, you know. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're chasing him after right the uh, right after uh, delivering the poisoned Oops. apple. <laughs> oh wow. Oh, all right. Okay. Final thoughts for me. My, my final thoughts on this episode. Uh, one of my favorites of the season, one of my favorite rarity episodes by, by far, the one nitpick that I have on it is like one tiny grain of salt compared to every other great thing that is on it. That, like, rarity's costumes changes, just her character being so great, like, She's, she's so much fun, the smooth jazz, the flow of the investigation, like what you said, Silver, how the humor actually sets up what is going to happen in the, in, in, in the third act and how it builds up the interaction between him and Rimbo, between her and Rimbo, it's just so perfect. It's so great. It's a great episode. And that's weird. Usually episodes and movies with more than one writer tend to be a disaster and this one wasn't. And I'm so glad that it wasn't a disaster. Well, great episode. Definitely one of the best. I think the reason for so many writers is just because of the different style in noir. The, the, I think that's why. Could be. I'm not sure. Uh, most, most like maybe one writer took care of the noir segments and another writer took care of the normal segments and then they combined them together. They flow way too well to be that way. I don't know. It's so neat. Besides, this comes from the same writers who did Castle Sweet Castle. They, they are the same. You never know. I am looking forward to more episodes of this duo. They, they work well together. But anyway, James, what's next week's review going to be? Oh, next week's review. Do you want to talk about next week's I will tell you about next week's review. Next week's review is going to be Made in Manhattan, which is episode 16 of season 5, overall episode 107, written by Noel Benvenuti. And, uh, it's another cutie map episode. Yay, finally. We're back to the cutie map. Yay, this is like, what, three times we have seen out of 16? So much for the, so much for the, <laughs> one of the main elements that got introduced in this season. Uh, at least we are seeing it way more than we're seeing the goddamn box in season four. <laughs> <laughs> so true. But that's going to be a story for another time. Well, thank you guys so much for checking this podcast. As silly as we get, we do tend to get ridiculous, but it's fun. Thank you so much for watching. 
I don't know what you're talking about. I am totally professional all the time. Yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah we, we are professional. Sure. Hey. Uh, well, dude, you are the most professional of all of us. You are the only one with an NLC on on his name. So, <laughs> yes, you are the most professional out of all of us. Yes, so professional. Yeah. All the people be like, ah, for my professionalism. <laughs> Well, I, I think all the people will be doing that for other reasons. No. But then again, uh, we were told not to disclose those photographs. So, no, yeah. what stays right. at night, my night stays at night, my night. Yeah, yes. Let's just keep this professional. <laughs> Silver Wolf, I shape it. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, where was I going with this? See you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. This has been James Cork. I have been Detective Sanzo. And you have the right to remain dead. <laughs> My gosh, again, how can that bullet travel without an explosion preceding it? No cool. Makes no sense. It's driving me crazy. They're professionals. Oh well. See you guys in the next episode. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Adios. It's back! It's back! <laughs> <laughs>